Space is incredibly vast and seemingly infinite, full of wormholes, black holes and undiscovered planets. We have discovered so little of space that it is almost terrifying considering we are but a tiny speck of dust in the universe. If we humans are so small and make very little impact on the universe as a whole, how could we possibly be alone in the world? Is it really just us? Well according to some signals, no. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 scary signals from out of space. Let's jump in. Coming in at number 5, SHGB02 plus 14A. Yeah, that's a mouthful. This is an astronomical radio source and is a candidate in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence discovered in March 2003 by Seti at home. Now, the source was observed three times for a total of about a minute at a frequency of about 1420 MHz, one of the frequencies in the waterhole region, which is theorized to be a good candidate for frequencies used by extraterrestrial life to broadcast contact signals. Now the region it hailed from is usually devoid of any nearby stars. The closest star systems in approximate region of the signal include the binary star G7311 A and B which are 106.1 light years from the sun. Although the unrelated star G7310 is only 108.7 light years away, less than 3 light years from G7311 A and B, all of these stars are red dwarfs which is the smallest and coolest kind of star on the main sequence and are by far the most common type in the Milky Way. Now there are a number of puzzling features of this candidate which have led to a large amount of skepticism. The source itself is located between the constellations Pisces and Aries, a direction in which no stars are observed within 1000 light years from Earth. It is also a very weak signal. The frequency of the signal has a rapid drift, changing between 8 and 37 hertz per second. Now here's where things get interesting. If the cause is Doppler shift, it would indicate emissions from a planet rotating nearly 40 times faster on its axis than the Earth. Each time the signal was detected, it was again at about 1420 MHz, the original frequency before any drift. Of course, there are many explanations for the signal, but many are purporting an artifact of random chance, cosmic noise, or even a glitch. I'm here for aliens, though. I always am. Coming in at 4, FRBs. One of the biggest mysteries out there in the universe is of course, is there something other than just us or are we alone in the universe? That's the question. Well as of August 14th 2019 we have inched closer to an answer. An astonishing 8 new repeating audio radio signals known as fast radio bursts aka FRBs have been detected flaring from deep space. Very creepy indeed. At the beginning of 2019 just one of these signals was reported to flash repeatedly. How However, in January, scientists reported a second repeating one. This means we're beginning to build a statistical database of repeaters, which would help astronomers figure out what these signals actually mean. These FRBs are perplexing and are detected as spikes in radio data, lasting just a few milliseconds. But in that time, they can discharge more energy than 500 million suns. I quote, Just as some volcanoes are more active than others, and you can think a volcano is dormant because it has not erupted in a long time, this can be said about FRBs. There is also a frequency drift. The first two repeaters showed a downward drift in frequency, with each burst getting successfully lower, kind of like a sad trombone sound effect. As of right now, scientists are attempting to figure out where the FRBs are hailing from and what exactly the signals mean. Perhaps it is from extraterrestrial life, telling us they're out there, or perhaps it's something far more sinister. Coming in at number three, Tabby's Star, also known as KIC8462852, Voyager Star or WTF Star is an F-type main sequence star located in the constellation Cygnus, approximately 1470 light years from Earth. Unusual light fluctuations of the star, including up to a 22% dimming in brightness, were discovered by citizen scientists as part of the Planet Hunters project. In September 2015, astronomers and citizen scientists associated with the project posted a preprint of an article describing the data and possible interpretations. The discovery was made from data collected by the Kepler Space Telescope which observed changes in the brightness of distant stars to detect exoplanets. Now, Tabby star is not the only star that has large irregular dimmings, but all other such stars are young stellar objects called YSO dippers, which have different dimming patterns. Now, several hypotheses have been proposed to explain the star's irregular changes in brightness, as measured by its light curve, but none to date fully explain all aspects of the curve. One explanation is that an uneven ring of dust orbits Tabby's star. Another explanation 
explanation is that the star's luminosity is modulated by changes in the efficiency of heat transport to its photosphere, one external obscuration is required. Now a third hypothesis, based on a lack of observed infrared light, visits a swarm of cold dusty comet fragments in a highly eccentric orbit. However, the notion that disturbed comets from such a cloud could exist in high enough numbers to obscure 22% of the stars observed luminosity has been doubted. It has also been hypothesized that the changes in brightness could be signs of activity associated with intelligent extraterrestrial life constructing a Dyson swarm. However, further analysis based on data through the end of 2017 showed wavelength dependent dimming consistent with dust, not an opaque object such as an alien megastructure. Again, I'm still going with aliens, so was aliens. Coming in at number 2, WOW signal. The WOW signal was a strong narrow band radio signal received on August 15th 1977 by Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope in the United States and used to support the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The signal appeared to come from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius and bore the expected hallmarks of extraterrestrial origin. It was Jerry R. Amon, an astronomer, who discovered the anomaly a few days later while reviewing the recorded data. He was so impressed by the result that he circled the reading on the computer printout and wrote the comment WOW on its side, leading to the event's widely used name. The signal itself lasted for the full 72 second window, during which Big Ear was able to observe it, but has not been detected since, despite several subsequent attempts by Amon and others. Many people have made assumptions about the source of the sound, including natural and human made sources, but none of them adequately explains the signal. To this day, the WOW signal remains the strongest candidate for an alien radio transmission ever detected. And finally, coming in at number one, the Judica Cordiglia brothers. The Judica Cordiglia brothers are two Italian former amateur radio operators who made audio recordings that allegedly support the conspiracy theory that the Soviet space program covered up cosmonaut deaths in the 1960s. The brothers claim to have acquired recordings of several secret Soviet space missions that ended in tragedy and mystery. This has of course generated public interest for more than 50 years, despite there being a large number of detailed rebuttals to the brothers claims. In the 60s, the brothers claimed to have heard radio communications taken from the secret space missions including the dying sounds of a suffocating lost cosmonaut. One of their most famous recordings was made on November 28, 1960. After about an hour of listening to static, the brothers recognised an SOS signal that seemed to be moving away from the earth. In 1963, the brothers claimed they recorded the voice of a female cosmonaut entering the earth's atmosphere in a malfunctioning spacecraft. In the recording she is heard to have cried out, I'm hot, as it burnt up. In total, the Judico Cordiglia brothers released nine recordings over a period of four years. The details were as follows. May 1960, a crewed spacecraft reports it is going off course. November 28, 1960, a faint SOS Morse code signal is sent from another troubled spacecraft leaving Earth's orbit. February 1961, a cosmonaut is audibly recorded suffocating to death. April 1961, a capsule is recorded orbiting the Earth three times before re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, days before Yuri Gagarin made his historic flight. May 1961, an orbiting spacecraft makes an appeal for help after going out of control. October 61, a cosmonaut loses control of his spacecraft, which veers off into deep space. November 1962, a space capsule misjudges re-entry, bouncing off the Earth's atmosphere and out into space. November 1963, a female cosmonaut dies during re-entry. April 1964, another cosmonaut is killed when his capsule burns up in the Earth's atmosphere. Since the 60s, critical analysis of the recordings has cast doubt on their provenance. For instance, audio transcripts reveal that none of the cosmonauts were supposed to be Soviet Air Force pilots, followed standard communication protocols such as identifying themselves when speaking or using correct technical terminology. Fishy fishy. Still, I have doubts. I think something greater is going on here. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary signals that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Perhaps we can do a part two. If you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. And until next time, see you later. <laughs> Wavelength dependent dimming consistent with dust not on. Wow. <sighs> Heard to have cried. Female. Sorry. What's M hurts? Like it's hurts. And until next time, see you later.